بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين الحمد لله الذي علمنا أن نحمد والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وعلى أصحابه الغر الميامين This is the first class of Quranic Arabic Today inshallah the students supposed to come out of this session knowing how to read In other words the system of reading and writing in the Arabic language Inshallah later in the course we are going to be using the system of most frequently uh, used words in the Quran and from that the purpose is to go to the ayah in Arabic and the student should understand between 90 to 95 percent of that from the Arabic text. So this is the goal inshallah of the course. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq Amen. and the means and the barakah inshallah. Okay, the Arabic language. In the English language, you need a long line, a small line, an inverted C to write any letter. This is what you need, right? Write a B. A C. An A. So these three shapes will give you the ability to write any letter in the English language. In the Arabic language, we used basically the same thing, but the dot is very important. This dot, how many dots I have, and the position of the dot, up or down, and the quantity is very important. So in addition to those lines and the dots, inshallah, we are go going to combine these to create the letters. What does this mean? It means that we have similar letters, but the position and the quantity of the dots will change the letter as most of us know. So today I'm going to cover three letters. I call them the three twins, plus the three long vowels, plus the three short vowels and something called sukun. With this, the student will be able to start to read in Arabic. So let us start. The first letter in Arabic is formed with the shape of a boat. <coughs> right? Shape of a boat. If I put one dot under this letter, this would be the sound of the ba, a ba. It sounds like, more or less, the B in English. The way to remember this letter, one dot at the bottom, bottom sounds like ba. One dot at the bottom sounds like ba. This ba has two twin sisters, right? And they share the basic shape. I call them the boat family or the pot family and if you like, like to cook eggs you can visualize a cooking pan frying some eggs there okay so the other two sisters are here's the basic shape now two dots at the top sounds like ta two dots at the top sounds like ta one dot at the bottom sounds like ba two dots at the top sounds like ta and when i have three dots at the top sounds like tha which is more or less the th sound in the word three three sounds like tha ba ta tha now arabic is particular language because the letters in Arabic are very social. They love to connect. Uh, we cannot read Arabic in separate letters. We have to connect the letters all the time. So any letter in Arabic assumes one of four positions. Either the standalone or the initial position which will connect from the right side 
or the middle position which will connect from both sides or the final position which will connect from this side the Arabic letters have to be connected with these wires I call them connecting wires so any letter in Arabic language that we study we must put it in that table standalone position initial position middle position and final position the good news is that you have to remember only two forms and from these two forms you will get the other two the two forms are called the face form and the full form if you see my full body you'll be able to recognize me and if you see my face you will be able to recognize me as well so by learning the full form and the face form you can derive easily the other two forms so let's put these three letters in our famous table it is the initial form no let's start with the standalone standalone form initial form middle form and final form when I put the letter in these four forms the letter doesn't change but this is how the system of writing in the Arabic language function what was this letter ba. sounds like ba. ba like B ba this family uses the face form which is the first part of the letter this is the first part of the letter and this is the face form and this is the full form so if you look at the ba it's like you brought this part of the wire down to enable it to connect to the following letter what do I do with these two things if I connect a small wire before the letter remember that Arabic is written from right to left if I connect a wire before the letter from the right side I will obtain the other two forms let's do that the middle form I get from the initial form and the final form would almost always look like the standalone form so here is my connecting wire and here is my middle back so this letter will connect from here and here with the other letters this letter will connect from this side if I take this letter and apply the same thing I'm going to obtain the final form of the letter back full form face form one wire before then I'm getting the four forms of the letter is this clear to everyone inshallah okay now how do I make this letter into the ta which is the twin sister just change the dot under the letter and put two at the top and you get the second letter which is the letter ta so the only difference between the ba and the ta is just the quantity and the position of the letters so let's do that here's my ta in full form and here's my ta in face form now I'm I'm not gonna use different colors to show you how this letter would look like in the books or in the Quran so as I'm, I'm going to use the same color so here is my ta in the middle and here is my ta at that let's take the third letter this 
stand alone sa initial sa middle sa and final sa these are twin sisters which means that they look almost identical the only difference is again quantity and position of the letters of, of the dots on the letters ba ta tha let us try some examples in arabic who remembers a word in arabic that starts with the word uh, with the letter ba a word in arabic that starts with the letter ba Baytullah, very good, Bayt, which means a house or a construction. When it refers to Allah, Baytullah, when this word is attached to the word Allah, it refers to the masjid, just like the Kaaba is referred to as Baytullah. Mm -hmm. Who can give me a word in Arabic that has the letter Ba in the middle? Ibrahim. 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 Although this case is special because the Hamza is a non-connecting letter, we will get to it. So I'm looking for one that the Ba is connecting. Ka'ba. Hmm? Ka'ba. Ka Notice that the Ba, we have a letter before it and letter after it. Ka'ba. How about uh, letter Ba at the end? Ahbab. Hmm? Ahbab. Ahbab, Kitab, Asbab. Okay, let's try the letter Ta. A word that starts with the letter Ta. Huh? What is it? Tawba. Tawba. How about Ta in the middle? Tamar. Tamar is at the beginning. Ramadan is coming up. Tamar. Uh, in the classical Arabic, we pronounce it as Tamr. Tam. Muttaqeen. Muttaqeen. Very good. Muttaqeen. The meme is before and the ya and Muttaqaf uh, is after. Muttaqeen. How about a ta at the end? Sabab. This is a ta marbuta. We call it the closed ta. We use the word bait again. Again, bait, which means house. The ta is at the end. How about tha? A word that starts with the letter tha. Thamar. Thalatha, Thamar, Thawab. How about a Tha in the middle? The name Buthayna. 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 How about Tha at the end? The word triangle is Muthalath in Arabic. Muthalath. We have a Tha in the middle. And we have a tha at the end, muthallath. So these are some examples. Okay, so now to summarize the first point in this lesson, we have learned a very important rule in Arabic that any letter must assume one of four positions either stand alone, or initial, or middle, or final, or at the end. Okay. Any Arabic letter must assume one of these four positions. We also learned that if I remember two positions, the standalone and the initial, I can easily get the middle and the final forms by connecting a wire before the letter. Arabic, as everybody knows, is written from right to left. So this is our system from right to left, this way. So the connecting wire is before the letter to create the middle form from the initial form which is the face form and the final form from the standalone form which is the full form so this is very important another thing we learned is that Arabic letters many of them look like each other they are twin sisters and to differentiate one from the other one we use the system of dots the number and the position of the dot will differentiate between the letters. Any questions thus far? 
Okay, very good. Now we are going to cover the system of vowels in Arabic. We have the long vowels and we have the short vowels. Once we learn these, then it will become easy to start reading in Arabic immediately, inshallah. So let's do that. We have three vowels in Arabic. In this session and this lesson, I'm not interested for you to know the name of the letter at this stage. For example, in English, this letter is called what? The name of the letter? M. The name of the letter is M. But inside the words, how does it sound? Ma or Mo depends on the vowel, right? So at this stage, I don't care that you know Alif, Ba, Ta, the name of the letter. What I'm interested in that you know the sound of the letter. Because we want to go straight and quickly and be practical to use it as it appears in the words. We will learn the name later. So we are interested in the function first, then later we can learn the names. Make sense? Inshallah. So I'm interested, analogy when it comes to English, I'm interested in the ma or mo or me sound more than to know that this is the letter M. I'm interested in the sound. Okay. The three long vowels in Arabic. Vowels shape the tonality of the word. That's why we need them. Every language has them. Arabic has two systems of vowels long vowels and short vowels please remember the following the long vowels in Arabi are letters and the short vowels are symbols again the long vowels in Arabi are letters they are part of the alphabet but the short vowels are symbols associated with the letters they are going to appear either on the top or at the bottom under the letter top of the letter or under the letter so this is very important to remember now I'm going to discuss the three long vowels which means in addition to the first three letters that we discussed we are adding another three okay so now we will have a total of six letters of the 28 alphabet in Arabic let's do it This sound is called the sound is ah uh, ah uh, and this is the long vowel ah uh. This letter has a particular quality There are 6 letters in Arabic that do not permit connection from the left side 6 of them and this is one of them. Remember I told you that a letter in the middle connects before and after? In the case of six letters of Arabic, they do not connect from the left side. They do not connect from the left side. They only connect from the right side. What this will create is that the standalone form will look like the initial form. And the middle form will look like the final form. So this sounds again, uh, let's put it in our famous table. Remember that this table is our bread and butter. Anytime we discuss a uh, letter in, in Arabic, we have to go quickly and put it in our famous table. Okay, standalone. It's like the trunk of a tree uh, in the initial form what did we say about initial form we have the letter is going to connect from this side right but this side is the left side of this letter which means that it will not be there so here we go supposedly in any regular Arabic letter I'm gonna have the letter and connect from here right but since this is one of the letters that is not connected from the left, I stop there. So, standalone form 
and initial form for these six particular non-connecting left side letters are the same. Okay, in the middle form, I'm supposed to have connection, letter, connection. But this letter does not connect from the left side. So what happens? Connection, letter. I'm supposed to have connection, but I'm not going to go there because this is not connected. So this is my middle. Uh, at the end, <coughs> I have what? Connection and letter. So here it is. Connection and letter. So this letter A, uh, these two are the same, uh, standalone and initial, middle and final are also the same. This is our famous long vowel A. Uh. So how many letters we have learned thus far? We learned ba, one dot at the bottom. We learned ta, which is two dots at the top. And we learned tha, which is three dots at the top. And this is our long vowel, a, a. Give me a word in English that generate this sound, more or less. This sound. A. Huh? Kaaba. Uh, no, I'm talking about in English. In English, uh, like... Uh, uh, I'm trying to think. No, long, long A. Do we have a long A in English? No. Almost. No, maybe not. Okay. How about in Arabic? In Arabic. Amin. Salam. Ah. Iman, ah, Iman. Okay, so this is the sound of this famous letter, ah. Again, I'm interested in the sound, not the name of the letter. Okay, now let's move to the second long vowel. It's like a circle, and then you go down like this. The sound of this letter is ooh. You know, like you hear little kids say ooh, huh? ooh. Yeah. This is the sound of the ooh, and it's one of the alphabet in Arabic, and it is one of the long vowels. Similar to the a, ah, it's a non-left side connecting letter. It does not connect from the left side. So when we put it in the table, I'm supposed to have in the initial form, I'm supposed to have the letter and then connect, but it does not connect from the left side, so I leave it there. So U, U. In the middle position, I'm supposed to have connection, letter, connection. But this letter does not connect from the left side, so I have connection and the letter and leave it there. The final position of the letter is supposed to be connection letter. I'm the final letter. So connection letter. Connection letter. Same conclusion again appears, illustrates itself. For the non-connected letters, the standalone form and the initial form are the same. The middle form and the final form are the same. How many letters do not connect from the left side in the Arabic language? Six. Today we have learned how many? Two. Two. We will learn about the other ones later, inshallah. One more long vowel. One more. And it is the E sound. E. So this is A. This is U. And the last one is E. Now the E is also a, a pot or a boat. It is one of the cousins of the ba, ta, and tha. Why do we call it a cousin? Because in two of the positions, it's going to be identical to the ba, ta, and tha. The only difference will be what? The dots. Make sense? So let's write the E. I'm going to erase this to write the E.
And inshallah, at the end, we will review the letters. The E has this shape in the standalone. Sometimes when I teach uh, the younger brothers this, I tell them this is like a skateboard. And these are the two wheels and you are like E, you know, doing like this. <laughs> yeah, having a little fun. You know, so E, E. This is a cousin for the Ba Ta Tha. Again, why? In two of the positions, it's gonna be identical. The only difference will be just the dots. So let's draw the initial form of this letter. Does it look like the ba, ta, and tha? Yes. In, in what position? In the initial position. In the middle position, I said you just connect a wire to the initial position. We call this the face form. If you see my face, you will be able to recognize me. If you see my whole body, the same thing. So this is the ya in the middle position. Very similar to the ba, ta, tha. The only difference is that this one has two dots at the bottom. And at the end, I get it from this one. Just extend the wire. So this is my E. The three long vowels in Arabi are A, U, E. Two of them are not connecting from the left sides, and these two are A and U. And the third one, which is the E, is a cousin of the boat family. The Ba, the Ta, and the Tha. Any questions up to this point? Okay, so let's now take the test. Are you guys ready? Okay. All right, I'll help you, inshallah. So we are going to review the letters that we have covered thus far. How many letters we have covered? Six. 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 Three consonants and three long vowels. Okay. I'm just going to put the shape. Okay. How do I make this shape the sound of the B? Just one dot at the bottom, right? Ba, standalone. Ba, initial form. In the middle, in the final. Again, what do we mean by this? Sometimes we have to write the ba by itself. What case is that? Think of that if the letter right before it is a non connected letter, then you are forced to write the ba in what? In the standalone form. Am I making sense to everyone? Yeah. So this is a case where the standalone ba is used. If the letter here before it is a non connected, it does not connect from the left. So I'm forced to write it in the standalone form. This is the initial form, which means that it is the first letter, and I will connect the rest from here. A middle form means there is a letter before it, and letter after it. So it connects from here and here. And final means that it is the, the last trailer of the train. It's the last letter. Make sense? Okay. Now, how do I convert this shape to its twin sister, the ta? Okay, so if I take out this dot, so now I have a ta, like tamr, like tilal. Um, what else? Another word. Tasneem. Tasneem. Tasleem. Tazkiyah. Tazkiyah. All these words have ta in them. So this is the shape of the ta. And as you see, it is identical to its twin sister, the ba. The only difference is number and position of the dots. 
Now let's go to the third sister. If I add, let's see the other color. If I add just another dot, it becomes what? Sa. 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 Just like the th in the word three in English. Th three. Sa. Sa. Thawab. Buthayna. Muthallas. Triangle in Arabic. Muth. Sa. Thallas. Yeah. Those of you who know French. It's like the, 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 I think there's a C in French with a, with a sign under it, like this. Right? Does this sound like tha in I'm French? The, the name is Amazon. Does it sound like tha in More French? Less, yes. More or less. In Spanish, if you go to Spain, the C, the C in Spain and the Z are pronounced tha. So, for example, the word information in Spanish is información. But if you go to Spain, they say información. That's their accent. And the Z sound in Spain also pronounced as th. Okay? So this is our th. Okay. So I'm going to leave the shape. You know that this represents the three twin sisters, right? Ba, ta, tha. It depends on the dots. Got it? Now let's review the three long vowels. This one was? Uh, uh. How about in the initial position? Same, Same, Same thing. thing. Because again, initial means I am the first letter and I'm extending my hand to join the following letter, but this is one of the not connecting, does not connect from the left, therefore the wire, that connecting wire doesn't go, so I stay like this. Okay? In the middle, I'm supposed to have what? Connection wire, ladder, connection wire, like this. Joining hands from, the, uh, from this side, I am the ladder, and I join hand from this side. But this is a non-connected ladder, the left side doesn't go, so it's gonna stay like this, connection, ladder. Connection, ladder. Final means, I am the last ladder, so I just connect from this side. Let's take the U. Same thing. In the middle, connection letter. It does not connect from here because it's a non connected letter. And at the end, connection letter. Let's have the Ya. Brother Naji, you still have your skating board? My skating board. E. <laughs> okay, so this is the E sound, right? And we said it's what? A cousin. Because in two positions, specifically the initial and the middle, it's going to be identical to the three twins. It's going to be a little bit different, the shape of the pot, the cooking pan or the boat in the standalone and the final. But in the initial and the middle, it's a cousin of that family. Cousin of the boat family, it's my boat family. You are the wheels of the skating board of Brother Naji. Yeah. <laughs> this is the initial position, right? Look at it, identical. The only difference obviously are the dots. In the middle position, same thing. And at the end, but now you need to fix these wheels, man. I use union number five. I don't need that stuff, guy. All right. Okay, any questions thus far? So we have learned six letters of the Arabic alphabet. Uh, inshallah, in the following five minutes, we are going to learn the short vowels. They are very easy. They are just the daughters of the long vowels. And with this system, you are going to start to read, inshallah. You guys ready, inshallah? Yes. Okay, bismillah. So let's erase this.
So the Arabic language says, from this, these three long vowels, these are the mothers, huh? the daughters came to be, okay? So every long vowel has what? A short vowel associated with it, we call it its daughter. Every long vowel has a short vowel that is associated with it, we call it the daughter. Why we call it the daughter? Because it has the same sound, but shorter. You say, how short, how long? It's very easy. It's going to depend always on the speed of speaking or recitation in the Quran. But the rule is that always the short vowel sounds half the length of the long vowel. Or you can say it the other way around. If the long vowel sounds double the short vowel. How long? How short? It depends on the speed of speaking or recitation of the Quran. Am I making sense to everyone? Yeah. Okay. Remember, what was the rule? That the long vowels are letters of the Arabic alphabet. They are letters. But the short vowels are what? Symbols associated with the letters. Some people call them the Arab because we use them in the Arab, which means the function of the word. Okay. So let's do it. This was my... Ah, I'm going to draw a dotted line. This dotted line is just for you to visualize any letter in the Arabic language. For now. Okay, any letter. Okay, just visualize this. This could be any letter in the Arabic language. If I draw an accent on the top of the letter, this would be what? Ah. Ah. So this is a. Ah. This is a. Ah. If I was to put a representation in English to these, this would be what? Like double A, and this would be just one. So double the sound, simple sound. Ah, uh, and this one is? Uh. Okay, now my super students, mashallah, you, you guys are excellent. You are giving me so much energy. <coughs> what was this letter? How about now? Ba, right? This is ba. Okay, here comes a trick. I'm gonna use the color code to make life easier for you. Let me see. Who, who wants to accept the challenge? Okay, brother, mashallah. Okay. Let's make it a little bit shorter. How many letters do I have connected to each other now? Two. Two, Two right? Can you read? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Ba. ba. How about this one? Ba. 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 This one is? Ba. ba. Short vowel, long vowel. The daughter, let me, let me make it a little bit more obvious. <coughs> Within the mother and the daughter, they like to wear the same clothing. <laughs> so here's the daughter and here's the mother. As we said, ah, ah. This now is just ba, and this one is ba. ba. The same thing is going to apply to the daughter of the other two. So let's go there. This long vowel was o. In English, two u's. Or yeah, two O's? Same. Two O's and U's are same. You get same thing. Same sound. Ooh. Ooh. This one is very easy because the daughter looks like mommy. <laughs> the daughter looks like mommy. It's almost the same thing. Huh? So, ooh, this one would be? Ooh. Okay, let's practice with the bag again. Let's compare, this one would be? Boo. Boo. And this one is? Boo. 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 You say this to your kid when he is like one month old and you start saying this when they grow older. <laughs> Boo. 
זה בו, רייש? אוקיי, נשאר. גוד. מאשאללה, you are an awesome class. אוקיי, the last one. ברדה נאזי, מאשאללה, you fix the wheels. אוקיי, what should I put here? דאבל E? E. דאבל E. 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 And the daughter is just the opposite of the A. It's an accent but under the letter. In Arabic, the name of this little thing under is called Kasra. And the word Kasra, the verb Kasra is to break something. Like when somebody breaks, their, when somebody breaks his hand, we say Kasra Yadahu, he broke his hand. Kasra, Kasra. So this breaks the letter. That's why they put it under, you know, to make the letter, the letter trap. <laughs> yeah. So on the top is A. This looks like mommy. Ooh. This one at the bottom of the letter, it just E. A, U, E, A, U, E. Let's practice with Bismillah. With the Ba again. Okay. So what do I have here? B. B. And this one is? B. B. Okay. We are almost there. One more thing we need to know about the system of vowels that just like any language, sometimes the syllables huh, don't have a letter, a consonant is not associated with a vowel. Give me a word in English that illustrates this. Give me a word in English that illustrates the absence of a vowel. How about the uh, word administrator? Admin. Administrator. How many syllables I have here? Two, right? Ad. Min. Why did I divide it there? Because the D doesn't have what? A vowel. So the rule says any letter that does not have a vowel must be pronounced with the previous yeah. syllable. That's why in English, uh, native speakers, right? How, how do I say this? Ad. Ad. Min. Min. Notice that he cut it where? At the D, because the D doesn't have a vowel. Ad. Min. Min. Same thing applies in Arabic. And we call it sukun. Sukun is just the absence of a vowel. When I don't have a, u, or e, or a, u, e, it means I have sukun. Sukun means non movement because the vowel is moving the jaw. Notice, a, we call it fatha. Why do we call it fatha? Because fatha means to open and you open your mouth. A. U, we call it Dhamma because Dham is to bring the lips together. U. And Kasra is like your jaw goes down. E. That's why it's, it's a sign under the E. Like that. Make sense? Yeah. So in Arabic, when we have a consonant that is not associated with any vowel, we say that that letter has Sukun. It means the absence of either a long or a short vowel. Same as in English, that letter has to be pronounced with the previous syllable. So how do we represent the sukun? There are two forms. One is the Quranic form, and one is the Arabic text form. Let's uh, write the symbol of the sukun. In the Quran, it looks like this. So if you see this symbol on the top of a letter, it means it's not, let's take the ba for example. It's not ba, it's not bu, it's not bi. It's not ba, it's not bu, it's not bi. And what is it? Just mm. 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 
sukun mm. because the arab the, the short vowels or the long vowels will move the jaw now you have no movement you just say the letter mm. and you breathe okay mm. 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 that's dangerous yeah because sukun literally in arabic means to stand still no movement and subhanallah look at the mouth you just say the mouth and you just stay there no movement mm, mm, right so it makes sense okay the other form in the Arabic texts that the sukun is represented as a circle and I don't want you to confuse it because the circle in the Quranic writing means uh, like you nullify the letter it's like a silent letter okay but please know for now quickly that in the Arabic texts uh, other than the Quran the Quran uses this form of sukun it's like a zero it's like I'm telling you a zero vowel no vowel zero vowel okay let me ask you a question how about if you are reading in the Arabic text and you see the vowels the short vowels and the long vowels and sometimes you come across a word that it doesn't have anything on it what do you assume Say, Sheikh, I'm so generous, I'm going to invent a vowel from my pocket. He said, no, don't do that. You are generous, but don't do that. Assume a sukun, that's it. Okay, am I making sense to everyone? So if you look at the letter, you don't see anything, assume sukun. So if I don't write any short vowel associated with the letter, you are going to assume you are the most generous, I love you, but don't just take a vowel from your pocket and add it because you might change the word. So, sukoon, if I don't see it, I assume it. Make sense, inshallah? Okay, let's practice a couple of examples with sukoon, and then we are ready to read our first word. And subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, I've done this before, and people are surprised that after this session, of course, with the letters that we covered, with the ba, ta, tha, a, u, e, and the short vowels, the person is able to read. And this is the purpose of this first session, to review the system. I know most of you probably know the letters in Arabic already because of reading the Quran and alhamdulillah that's great. But this was just to review the system of writing and reading in Arabic. Okay. Um, who would like to read? I didn't use the color, should I use the color code? Okay. Should I use the color code? <laughs> no, he is good, good inshallah. Yeah, yeah. Who would like to read? Tab. Huh? Tab. Tab. Very good. Notice, ta with the a, it becomes ta. The ba doesn't have anything. So it's sukun. Tab. Does life change if I do this? No. Does life change if I do this? No. No. How about now? Tabu. 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 How about now? Taba. Taba. How about now? Tabi. Make sense? Okay. Alhamdulillah. So there goes our first word in Arabic. Are you guys ready? Who would like to read? Bay two. Notice that I pronounce the ya with the ba as one syllable, then I cut here. Why did I cut here? The rule says any letter that has sukun has to be pronounced with the previous syllable. So how, how do I cut it? Bay two. That's how I cut it. This is the ad min. Remember? So bay two. Two syllables. Hmm. How about if I take this out? 
would like to pronounce? Bait. One syllable now. Because I omitted the short vowel, right? Bait. Is there a difference between baitu and bait? Not the meaning of the word, but the grammatical function of the word. Which just, you know, for you to keep in the back of your mind at this stage of the Arabic, that the last uh, letter will tell you the grammatical function of that word. So I might have this. Think Brother Akbar asked me about this yesterday. I might have baitu or baita. House, house. But what is the difference? The grammatical function. Is the word being used as the um, subject or the object of the sentence? Okay. Of course, in Arabic we have many more classifications. But the last letter of the word in Arabic will tell you through the Arab through the short vowels, sometimes the long vowels, will tell you the grammatical function of that word. But this is a more advanced level of Arabic. Okay? So when I say baitu or baita, they mean the same thing in the essence. This means house and this means house. But now the difference would be what? The grammatical function of the word. Fa'il, fa'il, bi, etc. Make sense, inshallah? All right. Uh, who can come up with a word that uses the six letters that we covered today? So we can finish, inshallah. Try to come up with a word. Let me put the letters here on the side. This is the review inside. So we covered what? Ba, ta, fa, a, u, and e. These are the letters. And we also covered a, e, u, e, e, and Mr. Sukun. This is basically what we covered today. Can anyone come up with a word from these? Yeah. No, you don't have to use all of them. Just oh, oh, using yeah. some of them. Uh, let's see. Uh, how about, how do you say door in Arabic? Huh? Very good. Bab. Notice that the A ah in its middle position, we said it's what? A non-connecting from the left. That's why I had to reinitiate and write the ba in its standalone form. Ba. Ba. Okay? Some people ask me at this stage, why didn't you put the a ah here? I tell them when the daughter meets the mother, halas, the mother is there. So you don't have to do anything, okay? But if you write this, this does not become ba. Uh, no. When the daughter meets the mother, just the maximum prolongation is the sound of the mother. It does not become three. It does not become ba a. Uh, it becomes just ba. Okay? And this is uh, true for the other two also. Uh, let's see, what, what else? Huh? Uh, but we have not covered the lamb and the, the, the closed ta. Still, we cannot write this word with, with these. Because I'm trying to use just the letters that I taught today. Um, uh, yes, that's a good one. Uh. Now before I go to that one, I would like to entertain this Islamic beautiful word. May Allah give this to us all the time. Thawab. 
Tha Wa How many syllables? Two I'm breaking here, right? Why? Because consonant vowel is what? Consonant vowel is what? Syllable Now this wow did not sound as a long vowel because I will explain to you the, the, the conditions for it to sound oo. So I don't say tha oo ab, it's tha wa, tha wa. It's going to sound like a W. So let me introduce this idea and I'll finish here, inshallah. I think in four minutes we will complete the hour, right? Inshallah. Oh, am I correct? Okay. The two letters oo and e. Sometimes they sound like consonants and sometimes they sound like vowels, long vowels. How do I know if this is going to sound oo and e and not like here, which is a consonant, like a W? So when this sounds like a consonant, it's going to carry the sound of a W. And when this sounds like a consonant, it's going to carry the sound of the Y. Y. The rule says two conditions for these two to sound as long vowel and not like consonant. Because they have the dual ability. They may sound like a consonant or a long vowel. Two conditions. Number one, itself by itself must have sukun. Itself by itself it must have sukun and the second condition there must be at least one letter before it and That letter must carry its daughter Because you want to push it like for example Boom Boom If you notice this wow is there at least one letter before it? Yes. Does it have its daughter? Yes. No. Because the daughter of the wow is the oo. So therefore, it's going to sound like a consonant and not long vowel. It's okay. I will explain this more later, inshallah. But this is just, you know, to end the session. So remember, two conditions for any long vowel to sound long. Oo. E. e and A. The A is included. Two conditions. Itself by itself must have sukun. So if I see A, U, or E on the top of these things, they cannot be a long vowel. If I ask you in this word, thawab, was this first condition fulfilled? Do you see anything on top of the wow? No. no. What do you assume? Sukun. Checked. So that first condition was fulfilled. Now let's go to the second condition. The second condition says there must be at least one letter before it, which means in good English, you cannot start with it because you need a letter, at least one letter before it. So anytime you start with these things, they cannot be a long vowel. Hmm? So there must be at least one letter before it. And that letter must carry the daughter of each. If it is a, the letter before it must sound with a. If it's u, with u. If it's e, with e. Now if you look at it, the is there a letter before the wow? Yes or no? Yes. Does it have its daughter? No. no. So this will sound like a consonant w, not like u. So how do I say it? Wow. Does the A sound long? Yes. Itself by itself it has sukun and sukun. Wa wa thawa. 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 So it's gonna sound long. Thawa. Inshallah, I'll explain this with more details later. Okay. Let's come up with a final example and finish today's session inshallah. Let me see. Uh, the, 
the verb to repent. The verb, not the, the, the noun. Who would like to read? Ta -ba. Notice the, the, the prolongation of the short vowel and the long vowel. Ta -ba. Ta -ba means he repented. Ta -ba. One more. Ta but notice the prolongation here and the prolongation here. Sa but sa but. So with this, inshallah, we end our first session. Zakmullah khair for your patience. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward all of you. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it beneficial. And inshallah, keep us in your dua. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.